Episode of Soloing Secrets. This is Larry Carlton, and if you search around on the channel, you'll find a three-for-all episode devoted to Larry, where we looked at some of his licks. Also, the chords of Steely Dan Chordplay episode feature some of Larry's music. And what could I possibly say about Larry Carlton? He's a pioneer and legend of the guitar. He's been on the scene since around 1962. A former member of the band The Crusaders, also a former member of the band Foreplay. He's released a mountain of solo albums, you know, studio and live albums. And historically, back in the 70s and 80s, he logged over 3,000 sessions, you know, in L.A. in the studios. So he's definitely a studio and session ace, a legend of the guitar, and a master of this emotive jazz rock kind of blues, you know, style. Great player. So once again, this is Soloing Secret, so it's a little bit different as far as the approach. We're taking a look at Larry Carlton, but it's kind of an overview. We're kind of stepping back and looking at some of those licks and phrases and playing habits and, you know, different things that pop up in his music. And one, you know, strategy you can use whenever you're approaching or really studying a certain guitarist, it's always beneficial to look at their influences and really try to tap into, you know, where their ideas for licks and phrases and songs come from. So here's an image with Larry Carlton's elusive musical influences. I know I mentioned this during the intro, but you really can't overlook Larry's you know, legendary status as a studio you know, session ace. And definitely back in the 70s and 80s, like I mentioned, he logged over 3,000 sessions during those two decades, which is crazy. But he's worked with everybody. Neil Diamond, Dolly Parton, Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, you name it. Larry's probably recorded or worked with whoever it is, but here's an image with just some of the people that he's worked with in his lengthy and impressive career. As far as Larry's soloing secrets and what I uncovered during the research, you know, putting this lesson together, I basically attacked his solo albums and material, also some of the session work he's done with groups like Steely Dan and Tom Scott and the LA Express and some other people. And there's a lot of music, so I definitely skipped some things. But one thing you're really going to pick up from studying, you know, Carlton's playing style is that smooth phrasing. You know, he's so smooth. And dynamics, you know, sometimes he picks hard, sometimes he picks really light. And there's a lot going on with this music. It's alive, you know, for sure. But here's an image featuring some of Larry's soloing secrets. Before we get started, I wanted to share one more thing. I did meet Larry Carlton briefly at Sweetwater. That was at Gearfest a few years ago when he was a presenter, you know, doing a clinic or a seminar. And he didn't really play. He just talked to the crowd and did some Q&A and told some stories, you know, from the road and studio and stuff. And it was so insightful and so inspiring. There was so much history and information he was sharing. And some of the things that he plays, obviously, is very inspiring. But some of the things that he says, you know, with his mouth is equally as inspiring. And here's a quote from Gearfest, and I try to remember this as often as possible, but this is brilliant. With the opening jam, that's just a three chord progression in D minor. That was D minor. To B flat major. To C major right there. So it's a one, six, seven in D minor. You know, D minor, B flat major, C major. So it's not really a Larry Carlton song, but I did put a lot of Larry Carlton licks in there. The super arpeggio made an appearance, and there were some pentatonic substitutions a little bit, and arpeggio, you know, phrasing and stuff like that. So definitely, you know, it's not really a Larry Carlton jam, but it was sprinkled with Larry Carlton licks. So I mentioned Larry Carlton's playing style is very smooth, and this first area in the lesson is going to kind of focus on some of the smooth phrasing. So we're going to start in E7, in this first phrase... And basically 
were in E, or uh, E7, and right, they were basically moving into this, uh, this C sharp, and you're gonna bend uh, this G to G sharp, so a half step there, then grab this A, then you wanna basically do a pre-bend on this, uh, you know, F sharp to that G, and you're gonna do a pre-bend and release, and then end on that E note right there. your pinky in there or if you want to just you know kind of center around your index middle and third finger but that kind of sneaky you know pre-bend in there and you can definitely find Larry do lots of slides and these pre-bends too and then you can kind of decide you know just using like this B note that D note or this E note on an additional note you can add to that phrase and it kind of turns it into a BB King kind of phrase like this and we're literally grabbing that E then B and then back to that E and then target this D note now like this and then finally end on that root note right there the E around with that phrase but that kind of smooth phrasing you know kind of a signature area in Larry's playing another area of Larry's smooth phrasing includes these smeared bends where it's very elusive but stuff like this so right there we're basically doing a half step bend and release on the C sharp to D that B and then you're grabbing G and then you're going to end bending that up a half step the G sharp like that so you're literally doing but you're doing it with bending like that now let's relocate that lick and do it right here the same thing but you know played and arranged in a different place now we're doing it on the high E and the B same lick we had right there we could do it again right here and you're just kind of finding these different you know variations and ways of playing that really smooth kind of sneaky you know blues lick idea of taking one lick and moving it around different positions and areas on the fretboard but let's apply it to the snappy blues lick that you might hear Larry play something like this and right there we're literally you know hybrid picking that F sharp and bending it to G and that's where the snap is you literally you want to snap that string string but you want to snap it or pop it and then you're doing this E to D and then sliding that D into that E like that now let's do the same lick but move it up here and you want to snap that first note again and then you're doing that blurry you know D to E action and then you're gonna slide that E or I'm sorry that D to E same lick but an octave higher let's do it again move it way up there same phrase or locations where you can play it. How about a Hill Street Blues blues lick? And this is from Larry Solo from the theme from Hill Street Blues, like this. One more time. So we're basically in C minor right here. C minor pentatonic. And we're doing this. So that E flat and then grab that B flat and bend it a whole step up to C. Then grab that C note and then bend that B flat to C again. So after that C note there, and when you get 
back to that B flat, that's where you're gonna bend that F up to G. theme from Hill Street Blues. You can hear that lick in action. Now we're going to start moving into some of Larry's intervolic ideas and to give viewers out there kind of a heads up or a primer as far as what that is. I'm just going to take this C minor pentatonic box right here, just the pentatonic scale. And the first idea, I'm actually going to string skip my way through it. And this is kind of a you know basic example of intervolic playing. We're putting some distance or space or jumps you know between the notes. So instead of the box like this, I'm going to do it like this. And I'm literally just skipping every other string. And you can descend and do pull-offs. And there I'm literally... I'm literally creating those distances, you know, between the notes and the scales. So instead of it being all side by side and close together... It's intervolic. And then we could arrange like a sequence in an intervolic way like this. Kind of a jazz, you know, sequence, but right there. And then you want to continue that pattern all the way through the scale. So the top two notes descending, and then the bottom notes there in that you know, pair of strings ascending. So it's purposely, you know, moving in different directions like that, down or descending, and then ascending, and then a jump. And that forces you, you know, to play intervolically all the way through that scale. Sequence, but it's really giving you kind of a bird's eye view of intervolic, you know, guitar playing. Here's a slick intervolic lick from Larry's Kid Charlemagne guitar solo from Steely Dan. It's something like this. <laughs> and there I'm hybrid picking. You could also just use your pick. Something like that. So we're literally kind of targeting the C major. picking version. There's the regular picked version, but you're just literally grabbing that uh, triad. And then you're, you keep going back to this E note. So you're grabbing you know, that G and that A back to that E, then the C back to that E, and then D. And then you want to slide that D to E, and then end with this uh, A note to that C note. slide up to that E note with your pinky and that would leave you kind of still in the same position you know to finish the lick that way you don't have to hop back like that like that kind of you know keeps you in that same you know basic playing position right there play around with that pinky slide but that's a cool lick for sure here's another anabolic idea this comes from the song the nightcrawler it's really cool something like this something like that so we're in the key of a and we're doing something like that slowly so we're hammering on that e to f sharp and then that g sharp to a and you're grabbing that e note right there and then you're doing the slip and slide kind of thing right there. And you're doing that A, G sharp, A, and then reach over and grab this F sharp there on the high E. Then do that slip and slide move again. And then G sharp. And at the end you're grabbing that A, D to C sharp, and then end on that B note. Here's a jazzy finger twister from Larry's Kid Charlemagne guitar solo from Seely Dan again. Something like this. Cool lick. One more time. So right there.
they were kind of targeting this G triad. But then right there, you're coming up. And that's really unusual because you're pulling off that B to G and then you're hammering this A to B right there. And then right there, you're kind of going back to this D major arpeggio right there. I guess you could also think of that as like B minor 7. Just for a second there. But uh... And then right there kind of walking up here and then grabbing that A note to B and then back to A. You know, cool lick though. Now we're going to take a look at some of Larry's pentatonic substitutions and he definitely does substitutions with pentatonic scales, also arpeggios and chords and things like that. But, uh, you know, for this idea, you know, most of you watching this that are comfortable playing, you know, minor pentatonic scales, you know, blues progressions and blues changes, rock progressions and rock changes, um, you know, a lot of that's either based around E7 or E minor, right? But for this, we're going to be basically targeting E major 7. And for a lot of rock players, they get confused around major 7 chords. They're not really sure, you know, what to do. This is definitely a jazzy sound, right? So I'm going to show you basically how this works. So over E major 7, pentatonic is not the scale you want to play there because that's not going to fit you know a major seventh chord with a minor pentatonic scale it's going to sound horrible so here's you know a looped e major seven chord and then here's e minor pentatonic so this is not what you want to play just for demonstration purposes players are comfortable with the major pentatonic. Just think of the Allman Brothers, and there's a whole bunch of examples of this. So just think of E minor pentatonic, move it down three frets, and there's technically C sharp minor pentatonic, but that also doubles as E major pentatonic. Now that would fit over that E major 7 chord. excels at are these jazzy, uh, you know, substitutions. So instead of doing just the traditional, you know, major pentatonic scale right there, what we're going to do, we're actually going to take, you know, think of E minor pentatonic and we're going to move that up a major third. So this is definitely a jazz thing, but we're going to take E, move to F sharp, and then move to G sharp right there. So think of E minor pentatonic here. But minor pentatonic right here. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to play that G sharp minor pentatonic over that E major 7, you know, progression I have looped right here. So there's E major 7, and then here's G sharp minor pentatonic played over the top. So when you play that G-sharp minor pentatonic, you're actually playing, you know, the essential notes that fit over that E major 7 chord. So the first note, G-sharp, that's basically the major third related to E, right? And then that B note, that's the fifth. You know, the C-sharp, that's basically the sixth of E. And then uh, this D-sharp, that's the major seventh of E. And then this F-sharp, basically the ninth right there. So there's the five notes. But relate those to E, and you definitely have, you know, the major third, the fifth, the sixth, the major seventh, and the ninth. So you have everything you need, but you don't have the root, right? There's no E right there. So if you want to add that E back in, you know, to target the root note, but that's a strategy a lot of jazz guitarists use. They avoid the root. It creates this tension, you know, because you're hearing notes being played against a chord, but you're not hearing that common, you know, root kind of home bass. You're hearing this tension of staying away from that root. And then you 
kind of add that root when you want to, but that's a great example of pentatonic substitutions right there, just like that. <laughs> loves using arpeggios. There's tons of things he does with them. And this next idea I uncovered is kind of this targeted, you know, kind of chord or triad approach. And we're also still dipping into some of that uh, jazzy, you know, pentatonic substitution, the G-sharp minor pentatonic over E major 7, you know, this stuff. And the lick itself, something like this. One more time. And right there, we're basically kind of targeting this E major 7 arpeggio, you know, gradually. But we're starting on the major 7 and then targeting that triad right there, E major. And you want to hammer on to that C sharp. And then... So that first part's kind of E major. And then right here, that's kind of like a little piece of B major. What we're doing... Like that. And then you're ending on that E note, the root. a bunch of licks like that where it's blurry and kind of race through there. And you could also practice that uh, backwards or descending. Like that. And then... You know, really cool lick though. Last but not least is Larry's Super Arpeggio and I did feature a little bit of this during the opening jam and this is really cool. And the original, you know, fingering, or the location where Larry demonstrated this when I learned it, was like this. One more time there. Now, I'm not really that big of a fan of that fingering. It's kind of clunky and unusual. But right there, it's basically like G minor. these arpeggios. There's another fingering right there I kind of tapped into. And I definitely like that one more than the other. And it's a little stretchier, but I like it. And there's a ton of different ways you could approach this. You could also do it this way. kind of unusual because when you get to the G and the B you've got that fingering and then you're going back and ending on that G note right there so that's weird because the fingering you know changes and it's kind of screwing me up and it might screw you up too you know really unusual uh, arpeggio for sure that's another way you could look at it something you can investigate and check out. It's not really something you want to shred through. It's really just these textures and different colors of arpeggio. I mean, you can attempt, you know, shredding through that, but there's so much uh, movement and it's spaced, you know, so sporadic. That might be really weird to try to shred through. That shape would probably help. Once again, you know, nothing about Larry Carlton is shredding or intense, you know, ingve kind of sweeping or whatever. It's smooth, it's laid back, it's musical, melodic, bluesy, and also jazzy and stuff. But that's a, you know, a great idea. And it's just, like I said, kind of superimposing those arpeggios. You know, which is tons of different ways you could look at that, like that. this episode of Soloing Secrets with Larry Carlton and like I mentioned earlier you know Larry's just such a smooth guitarist you know the phrases and the way he plays and puts everything together the complete package you know just that effortless smooth 
emotive phrasing and bending and the pre-bends and the slip and slide phrases and all this stuff. You know, it's very exciting to listen to him play where it's like, wow, you know, listen to all that. And he's not really a shredder. You know, you're not going to catch him like tapping and sweeping and doing all that stuff. It's more feel and energy and melody and groove and kind of playing in the pocket, you know, playing against, you know, the rhythms and the other instruments that he's playing with, keyboards and drums and bass and whatever. He's the package deal, you know, a great guitarist, a legend of, you know, session work, this jazz rock kind of influence, but also a big blues fan too. You know, phenomenal guitarist for sure. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.